Should we just wait? Yeah, they have to do it. I mean, it's just, it's too good. Can you hear me? Oh, yeah, there I am. Yes. Oh, yeah, it's, it's a pretty good song. Yes. It works. If you're just joining us, please welcome Karen Parsons. Let's hear it for her. Yes. Thank you. I have a few questions of my own, and then we have Dave right over here. Give it up for Dave, ladies and gentlemen. Dave is going to be your new best friend with the microphone, so in just a few minutes, we're going to get some questions from you. First of all, Karen, how are you enjoying Comic-Con so far? I'm loving it. It's, it's huge. Yeah. I can't get over the size. It's enormous. I was hoping to get to run around. I'm, I don't think I'll see but a quarter of it, probably. Yeah. And you're far. You're all the way over there, right? I had, yeah, we, they drove me over here. <laughs> if you had to be driven over, you're pretty darn it's far. It's pretty far, yeah. Yes. Well, um, you were with us, I think, in Liverpool as well. So not your first Monopoly events, uh, Comic-Con. No, that was great. Yes, yes. So how are you enjoying uh, all the fans and the fan interaction? Everybody's been so wonderful and so kind and sweet and, um, and just, it's just very warm. And it's how it's been in Belfast since I've been here. Yes. And it's been really nice at the con today. Yes. And look at all of you. Thank you so much for coming. Yes, give yourselves a round of applause. Beautiful audience. Now, when you come over to the UK for Comic Cons, do you get a chance to see anything, to get in some culture or some? Well, I've been here. Tours? Yes. I, mean, I haven't been able to explore the con yet, yeah. but in Belfast, I like to, when I go places, I like to go kind of um, get lost. Yeah. I like to just wander, and yeah. I, I got lost. <laughs> but, but it was okay. It, was, uh, it wasn't too, too crazy. But um, it was, it's nice. I like to find, you know, I find myself in front of a place and just kind of go in and see what yeah. it's like. And the people have been so friendly. Yeah. And I got to go see a show at the Mac, which was fun. Ooh. And uh, yeah, and I had a friend come in from Dublin. A friend of mine just moved to Dublin oh, wow. this summer. And so she came in and met with me. And so we went and exploring and went to vintage stores and antiquing Love and all that. that stuff, which is, you know, always yeah. fun. Very good vintage shopping here as well. Yeah, I'm going to have to get a new, I have to get a duffel bag to take home because I, I do the same. Yeah. <laughs> collected stuff. The shopping is too good. Yeah. And we'll get to the fashion portion in a moment because I'm dying to know about all that. But I think obviously, you know, you being in the UK, for me, I grew up on Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. I grew up wanting to be Miss Hillary Banks and I almost wore a beret in your honor. <laughs> but I thought I wouldn't go that far. But isn't it amazing to see that even in the UK, I mean, there's, there's reruns of the show on all the time, that yeah. it's, it's made such a massive impact on all the lives here too. Yeah, it's kind of crazy. It's nothing yeah. we would have expected at the time. Yeah. We were doing it, we were having a great time. We got along from the very first week together. Okay. The cast just clicked. And so it was just like you were playing and we played really well together. So we were playing and you felt like it was just us and the audience that was there. Yeah. It's like if we were all doing it and we think it was just us, but there were cameras and not only was it going out into all, all across the country, it was going to other countries and then it was decades, it was going out to generations yeah. you know, you know, that were coming up. So none of that we expected at the time. I certainly didn't yeah. expect. So it's... Um, it's been the, you know, the gift that keeps giving kind of thing. It's just such a good experience and, and really, I have to say, an honor to be a part of yeah. and to have touched people in, in their lives that way. Because there are people who obviously have done that for me. Yeah. Um, so it's really fantastic to be a part of something like that. Yes. I mean, there's so many different memories of the show that I have watching with my sisters <laughs> growing up. And there are so many comedic episodes. Obviously, it's a comedy and there's hilarious moments. But there's a lot of episodes that actually get very, very heavy yeah. and very real. On Facebook, you know, these things pop up that you see. On Facebook, I just saw the one about uh, Will's dad. Yeah. And he was supposed to take him with him, and he didn't. Yeah. So there were some really poignant moments in the show. Your character went through it as well yeah. with Trevor. Oh, yes, definitely. Yes. <laughs> Rest in peace, Trevor. That was tough. That was tough. But the one with Will, I think, and his father is definitely a, a favorite. Yeah. And it's, it's something to be said for the sitcom. You know, that you, you're left, you, it's like a Trojan horse kind of um, delivery because you're having so much fun, you're laughing and you're wide open and you're not expecting it and you get hit with something real yeah. that really lands. And um, so that, I know that show had that effect. With Trevor, there was a lot of comedy. We, we used poor Trevor. <laughs> God bless Trevor. Poor he thing. should do the Comic Cons with you. That would be hilarious. Oh, you know, you know um, it, was so, it was such a bittersweet thing when that happened because we had been gone. It was the first episode of a new season. So we yeah. came back 
and we're reading it at the table read, and you read that Trevor dies, and it was just like, oh! <gasps> Brian, you know, the, the Trevor character, I loved, but Brian Stokes Mitchell, who played Trevor, yeah. I loved working with, and I really liked the man a lot. Yeah. And so the fact that he clearly wasn't coming back yeah. <laughs> was, good. It was heartbreaking. But he has gone on, for those of you who don't, is anyone familiar with Brian Stokes Mitchell, who played Trevor, outside of Trevor? No. He's gone on to be a multi-Tony Award-winning Broadway actor. He's oh my like, God. Yeah, he's like a huge Broadway guy. I'm gonna Google this. Like he has all these awards. He's, he's, a, he's fine. <laughs> He's fine. He bounced. He bounced. If you take anything <laughs> away from Comic-Con, Trevor's okay. Hashtag Trevor is fine. That's good to know. Well, speaking of fine, uh, for me, loving Hillary Banks, the character, I loved the fashion. And I just tweeted and said, we have a style icon right here. And what's crazy to me is a lot of the stuff that she's wearing, even in this photo, uh, a lot of it's coming back into fashion. I so is that wild? Store, I was just in the store um, yes, day before yesterday here in Belfast, we were walking around and I saw outfit after outfit that looked just yeah. like Hillary. I yeah. mean, I've seen bits a little over the time, but the other day it was crazy. I couldn't believe it. We had a really incredible um, wardrobe woman, uh, stylist named Judy Richman, who she seemed to understand everyone's, you know, I felt like, you know, Hillary was such the fashionista, yeah. but she also had Ashley mapped perfectly. Right. And she was even figuring out Will's style with him and yeah. how it would change. And Carlton, like in the mother, Vivian, she yeah. like really oh, had did. everyone's style very clear and she knew what she was doing. She would get, because the show didn't have, even though we were supposed to live in Bel Air, we didn't have a big um, budget for wardrobe, so she would... That's funny. Isn't that crazy? That's shocking. Which is not the same for the show, Net, the new Bel Air show. They've yeah, they're got they're huge, doing all right. They've got Chanel, yeah, right? Yeah, damn. We didn't. So we, she would go to sales in the department stores and bring back things that were three sizes too big for me uh, that she got 75% off. And I was... Look at them, and I was like, Judy... <laughs> Yuck, you know, I don't want to wear that. You know, this looks awful, what is this? And she's like, just put it on, just put it on. And I put it on and then she'd call in Cynthia, who was the tailor, who would start pinning. And she'd pin and she'd push things up and around and, and then three days later, I'd go back to wardrobe and try on the same outfit and it looked like a million bucks. I mean, that you always hear about like, you know, always invest in a good tailor. I was never very great at that, but it makes all the difference in the world. All of those clothes that you see me on, the reason they look so expensive is because they're tailored to my body. Yes, that's that crazy. So. That makes me appreciate it even more because she was frugal about it. She was, she was so frugal and she just made these things look incredible and yeah, expensive. Yeah, frugal fashionista. We're gonna get to our questions in just a moment. If you have a question for Karen, just raise your hand. But another question for me, so the character of Hillary Banks, not only was she hilarious yeah. and a style Thank icon, you. But really, and what I loved about her too is she was a boss babe. Like she was getting things done. She was hosting her own show. So yeah. there's a lot of serious parts to her character that I think people just go, oh, it's Hillary and she's funny. Yeah. But she was really, really doing it. She really was. Yeah. And she was kind of unapologetically, you know, driven. Yeah. And uh, it's funny because you do get caught up in how she seemed kind of frivolous and silly right. and dingy and all of this because she was, yeah. but she was also, she knew what she had things she wanted and she just, you know, that, that yeah. same kind of tunnel vision for her fashion, she, as she got a little older, she zeroed in on her career, yeah, on what she, she was really doing. Did. And she seemed so silly about it, but it was just because she was, honestly, she was enjoying it. She had joy and passion yeah. and drive. Who would have, who'd have thought it, I right? Know. Under all that gorgeousness. <laughs> Yes. If you have a question for Karen, please raise your hand. Our buddy Dave is there with the microphone. We've got a question here on the left. Hi. 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 What was your favorite episode to film and what was the worst? Oh, oh. Well, and what was the worst? No one ever asks me that. Um, what was my favorite? My favorite one was in the first season when Hillary dropped out of college. You guys remember that episode? And, and Will and Carlton both blackmail her and then end up having to bark like a dog and all kinds of stuff at the dinner table. That was such a fun episode to shoot and it was the first season. So 
I got, I was really worried about, you know, like, oh, the audience is going to hate her. I wasn't, I don't know how worried I was, but I was really certain that the audience was going to hate her because she and Will were kind of going at it and everyone loved Will. And um, sure enough, <laughs> when I go to Carlton for help and he, and I say, oh, he's making me clean his, his shoes or some, something. His sneak, and he says, will you clean mine? And when he turned and joined in on the blackmail, the audience went bananas. They didn't just clap or, or yell. They were stomping their feet in the stands. They were so excited to hear her, to see her get hers. Yeah. And, I, and if you watch the show, if you guys catch it um, uh, on repeat and the reruns, you'll see we're holding, Alfonso and I are holding for the laugh for a long time and they keep cutting to us and I'm trying to keep a straight face and I don't succeed. I end up laughing, but I try to make it look like a, I can't believe you laugh yeah. <laughs> because I couldn't hold it back because the audience was going crazy. Yeah. So that was really, and then also when we got to the table, it was so fun to shoot um, because we all, were, we all were hitting our beats really well and that is a really fun feeling. It's like you're doing sports or something and everyone's catching and doing what they're supposed to or dancing with someone. So that was really, really fun and funny. And um, it also set the precedent for us not being able to do dinner scenes without laughing hysterically and getting into trouble. Yeah. But as far as my, um, the worst one, that's a really good question. I'm not so sure. I know there was one with Queen Latifah, not when she played my boss. But when she played Will's um, best friend, and in that episode, I got stuck in a hurricane <laughs> in the Bahamas, <laughs> and I didn't come home till right before the show, so I hadn't rehearsed. I didn't know anything, and they kind of just stuck me because I'm I'm supposed to do every show, so they kind of just like stuck me on the bed on the corner, <laughs> sitting there. I don't know if I even had a line, but um, and, and I had another show once. I remember where I was sick. I was so sick I was almost blind. And whenever I watch it, I look perfectly fine. But at the time, I remember I was propped up on, you know, day, daytime cold medicines and st I felt like I was staggering around. And I see it and I'm like, I look really good. <laughs> Amazing. This cold looks great on this you. This cold looks good. <laughs> Another question uh, right here in the front. Hi. Hi. Um, so what part of the character could you relate with? What part of the character could I relate with? It's an um, interesting question. Um, I think when we were doing it, I felt like, oh no, she's totally different from me. She's completely different. And I really enjoyed being able to be bad. I was brought up like, you know, you don't have anything nice to say, you don't say anything at all. And you know, polite, my mom was very, very polite. And, and so I got to be like, I got to say really, <laughs> horrible, very funny things, um, and I loved all of that, but I did like her, I think there are parts, it's more the parts of her that I maybe didn't have as much that I admired in her, I got to be, which was the unapologetic kind of drive and this kind of guts and confidence that honestly, when I, Judy Richmond, our costume, uh, our stylist, would say that the character came alive as soon as I put the clothes on because she would watch me change, transform. And it was kind of true. It was almost like I put on my superhero suit when I put on Hillary's clothes. And, I, and I, got, I gained incredible confidence. You know, I was like, and they became a part of me. Um, I don't know that I would say I related to it, but I got to be it when I put on the clothes. It, it just changed me. It's amazing what a pair of statement earrings can do. We've got a question right over here Hi. on the left. Hi. How you doing the, the Carlton dance in so Can we see? <laughs> I've seen it. I can't do it. I'm not kidding. I, my body, and it doesn't move that way. <laughs> but I would love to see somebody come up and do it if you can't. Can you do it? Who can do the Carlton? Come on, somebody who knows how to do the Carlton. Get up and do it. I know there's somebody in their seat just wiggling around. There we go. Give him oh, a yeah, round of applause. We, we go. got there it. We go. There we go. Oh. We, we need some Tom Jones <laughs> Thank up in you. here. Love it. Quick question for me before we get back to you guys. If you have a question for Karen, just raise your hand. Uh, speaking of Alfonso, do you keep in touch with a lot of the cast? Yeah, yeah. I'm really 
fortunate that, like I said, we got along that first week we clicked, but it, it's lasted all this time. We're like family. We, we, we got along so well. We loved each other so deeply during the show. We did lots of things outside of the show together, obviously, but we really bonded because we had something in our lives happen that was really affecting for the rest of our lives. Like, we're, we will always be connected. Um, but I'm happy to say that, yes, I'm in contact with Alfonso, who is like a brother to me, really like, because I don't have a, I mean, I didn't grow up having a brother. So Alfonso really is like a brother to me. Tatiana really is like a sister to me. She's also on the board of my organization, Sweet Blackberries. I was going yeah. to ask about She's Sweet also Blackberry on org, ladies yeah. and gentlemen. Can you tell us about that? Yeah, SweetBlackberry.org is a, um, an organization, nonprofit organization I started in uh, 2005. And the mission is to bring little known stories of black achievement to kids. We do this through um, short animated films and through books. But there's stories that you don't hear about so much, you probably wouldn't hear in the classroom, but there are incredible stories of um, challenges and achievements. And the whole idea is to show children what they are capable of and that obstacles are actually opportunities for greatness. And so we've got um, people like Lawrence Fishburne and Chris Rock and Queen Latifah and Alfre Woodard narrating these stories about real people in history for kids. And then, like I said, I have the books now. I've done enough four films and I've done two books. Very cool. Round of applause for that. Sweetblackberry.org. Please check that out. Thank so you. So if you're working with Queen Latifah, it ends up that you now got, gave your old boss a yeah, job. Yeah, I got to be Queen Latifah's boss. That's hilarious. <laughs> Very full circle how that works. Yeah. We've got Dave there with the microphone for a question. Oh, from our Carlton dancer. Hello. Um, what do you think was the funnest thing you did on set? What was the most fun thing that I did on set? Yeah. Oh, gosh. There were so many fun, fun moments on that show. Um, I had a lot of fun shooting one show that I didn't end up ever watching because when we shot it, when we did rehearse, Sorry, we can hear the microphone, Dave. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Sorry. Um, there was a show where my character took, I don't know, did I take like medicine or something I wasn't supposed to take and got really, do you guys remember that? Anybody remember that? I never saw it. <laughs> I'll just say, when we first rehearsed it, um, did the dress rehearsal, it went so well. It was so fun. And Will, with Will, it was so funny. Um, but when we shot it in front of the audience, it didn't quite go the same. It went well enough. Yeah. But for me, it was not the same as the first time, and so I haven't been able to watch it. Oh, but you know what was really fun? One of the funniest times for me, and they show this in the bloopers, is when Trevor had passed away, and we were, it's a night at the opera or something, and uh, Will pairs me up with his teacher. Did anybody see that one? And then he's at the opera, and I, and I keep focusing on his mole. Oh. He has a mole, and he's like, Don't, you know, stop making a mountain out of a molehill. <laughs> and, um, but that background, you guys, maybe you guys see the bloopers on the shows? So if you've seen the bloopers, you've seen that Will keeps saying, he's ad-libbing lines, and I can't keep it together. I was crying. I could not stop laughing. That was the funniest. He said some of the funniest stuff just that I didn't expect. Yeah. And um, that was a lot of fun. That was fun. That's one of the greatest episodes. We've got a question over here, Dave. We've got a few uh, arms in the audience. Thank you. But I'll tell you really quickly, one of the funniest moments that ever happened on the show was when Alfonso broke the, the fourth wall. Have you ever seen that? When Alfonso drags himself across the floor on his knees, yes. the kitchen floor, and then he runs through all the sets. Yes. He did run, and he runs up into the audience. We didn't know he was going to do that. I don't think he knew he was going to do that. He just got bit by something and went crazy. He's so funny. And that was, I think, one of the funniest moments ever on the yeah. show. Go to YouTube. It's there, I promise. Hi. Hi, I'm Leah. Um, my question is, was it hard filming the last episode? Was it soft? Oh, the last episode, yeah. It's, that's a big blur for me. The, the, what I remember about it the most is, like, oh, it's funny, I'll talk with... I'll hear my castmates talk about it, and they remember it a lot more than I do. All I remember was the last moment, because I kept thinking, because that whole like being a good girl thing, 
I wanted so badly to deliberately mess up, so I would have to do it. We'd have to do the scene again, and we'd have to do it again, and we'd have to do it again. <laughs> and, I, and I kept thinking, mess up, just mess up. Come on, what do you have to, just, just do it. And I, the good girl kicked in, and I ended up doing my lines properly. And I just remember walking off, and this awful feeling of like, you can just stop, just don't walk any further, just stop. And I kept walking, and then it was, once I was off, I couldn't do anything about it, it was over. It was, that was very painful. And how many years hard. of your life was the show for you? Six. Six years. We did it for six years, yeah. Big part of your life, yeah. Yeah, big part, and it, I mean, I was so young when I started. So it really changed my world, you know, tremendously. Like growing up on the show, literally. Yeah, yeah, it's amazing. Another question here. I love that it's ladies today, mostly. That's fabulous. Hi. Hi. Who is your favorite person to work with on set? Oh, of, of my castmates, you mean? Of my regular castmates? That's hard. Because um, I'm just crazy about all of them. I, I think, I mean, I really, 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 really loved working with James Avery who played my dad, Uncle Phil. I mean, I, he was, I mean, he was just incredible. He was an incredible actor. He was a great person. He was a really, really good friend. Um, so, I, I, you know, and, but Alfonso is one of the funniest people you're ever gonna meet in your life. Alfonso Ribeiro is just an idiot. Just he's, an idiot. He's ridiculous. I mean, sometimes he does stuff and you're just like, what are you doing? And you're laughing so hard. And he had a, uh, there was a whole exchange with a, one of the directors on the show once where he was like, is it too much? And she's like, I don't know, I laughed. And that became the gauge, like, it's never too much if you laugh, you know? And Alfonso would go way over the top, but if you laughed, you're like, I guess it worked. <laughs> you know, Alfonso was really fun uh, because he made, made you laugh so much. Yeah. A little like physical comedy too, the dancing. Yeah, yeah. And he just he just goes with what feels right. He doesn't question too much, yeah. and his instincts are, in, are spot on. I mean, he's just so funny. Um, so yeah, love that. Like, that's my question guys. here on the right. Hello. Hello. Um, how do you feel about Hillary's portrayal in the new Fresh Prince? Because obviously she's strong, but it's in a this it's just kind of thing. right, right. It's modern and it's a drama. Um, my husband won't call her Hillary; he calls her Tiffany because he refuses to call her Hillary. That's so cute. <laughs> but it's a you know it's a totally different. It's hard to compare it to me. I find it hard to compare them because it is modern and the Hillary that we were doing. It was in a day and age before social media before, you know, all of Hillary's primping and looking at herself and all of the stuff that she did is kind of normal now. <laughs> like the selfie and everything has become just kind of commonplace. Where at the, at the time, Hillary was a standout kind of crazy over there taking her own picture, you know? <laughs> so um, it's, just a, it's just different. It's a whole different universe, I think. And they did make, te they teased wanting to make when we did the show, wanting to make her a strong black woman. I wasn't crazy about the idea of us doing that, particularly for comedy, because I felt like, where do you go from there? You know, I think there's a lot to learn from p flawed characters. When someone's flawed, it's like Archie Bunker on all of the family. When you have somebody who's just a flawed character, it's like holding a mirror up to a segment of society or to a way that people are that is kind of interesting and a lot to learn from. And I liked that about Hillary being kind of self-centered and shallow, and I liked that part of her. So for me, it worked for, our, for comedy. But like you said, it's a whole different universe doing it uh, modern day and drama, I think. Thanks for the question. Other question here. Hello. What was it like playing with all them actors? What was it like playing with them? It was, it was like playing. I mean, it really was play. Like we were goofing off and we were having so much fun and sometimes we got in trouble. <laughs> like if we, were, <laughs> if we giggled too much and couldn't stay on and whatever, or we went to lunch and we came back and we were like 
trying to do all of our lines from the couch, from sitting down. <laughs> Director's like, get up on your feet. You're like, I'm going to do my, I think I should sit in this scene. I think she should just sit down in this scene because I'm tired. <laughs> so, and you get chewed out. But, um, but it was, you know, it was like, it was like playing with your buddies, you know? We, we just, it was so much fun. For six years, I loved going to work. I mean, what's better than that? Oh, and on the note about my favorite uh, person to act with, I will say outside of my castmates, my favorite was we had so many great guests on the show. I know it sounds strange, but you guys remember Regis Philbin yes. on the show? So funny. Dry. He could live here. <laughs> Dry and hilarious. I loved working with Regis Philbin. He's amazing. Yeah, he yeah. was great. We have time, I think, for one more question from you guys. Just put your hand up, and our buddy Dave will run right over to you. Any final questions for Karen Parsons? Yeah. Oh, we've got one right here. All right, we'll do two more. All right, there and then there. We got you. Thank you, Dave. Hello. Um, Hi. What was your uh, favorite scene? Like, what did you think was the funniest, like, when you watched the show now? When I watched the show, was the funniest? Hmm. I don't watch it, <laughs> you know, whenever, and I want to, I want to sit down and watch it because when I do stumble on it, I laugh so hard and we, we had to do something for Twitter recently where we had to watch and comment live and I was watching it and I was laughing so hard. Um, that's a tough one though. I mean, like I said, I loved shooting the show that, where I dropped out. I mean, the, the Trevor stuff was really funny for all of us to shoot as painful as it was to like drop him from the bungee cord. I think that <laughs> that scene was really, really fun to shoot, even though it was awful. <laughs> and the sound, people were having such a good time because we were, we were watching a television and we were watching what the audience saw, which was someone bungee jumping. And we we're watching it and it would always go fuzzy right, be right at the end of the jump. But the sound people, we're having a good time and playing with all different kinds of squishy sounds at the end. <laughs> they were doing like just different things and the camera was on us having to hear whatever, you know, biting into an apple yeah. or some kind of splat, you know, like oh. egg splat or whatever thing they decided. And we had to try to keep in character <laughs> regardless of what the sound was. It's, if you think about it, it's a very sad scene, but it's hysterical. It's so much fun. Uh, we have one final question over here. Thank you. And then we're going to let Karen get back to her autographs and photos today. Hi. Hello. What was your favorite memory from the show? My favorite memory? I think my favorite memory um, was from a behind-the-scenes thing were birthdays. Because after the show, or two things. One was birthdays, because they would have a cake could come out for whoever's birthday it was, and there was inevitably a cake fight, which was really always fun, especially if you got Will. And um, so, and I know I got him really good at the, when the show was over, but, um, but the, so that was always fun. Um, another thing that was really fun is in between, I mean, it was really like a party backstage. I think if you've seen the behind the scenes show that shows us kind of gearing up for it, you've seen it like Will and, and Carlton would do that dance together, which just started, we, we'd hear music, you hear music on Friday nights uh, right before the show, and everyone would make their way to Will's room, and we'd all dance around, and he and Alfonso would start doing this really silly dance. They just made up on the spot, and it became a regular thing. And we'd go out and do the show, and in between scenes, um, while we were waiting for setup sometimes, the DJ, we had a, we had a, um, a comedian, D.L. Hughley, was out there in the audience, you know, keeping the audience excited and, and engaged in between stuff, and then we also had really great DJ. And our DJ would put on, um, what was it? Was it Billie Jean? I think it was Billie Jean. And Alfonso, who for those of you who ever saw the Pepsi commercial know that Alfonso, when he was little, was in the Pepsi commercial with Michael Jackson, and he can, he can imitate Michael Jackson perfectly. And so they would put Billie Jean on, and, wherever, and the spotlight would go on Alfonso wherever he was hanging around, and he would turn, look, and go, and then all of a sudden he'd moonwalk, 
<laughs> and then he would just start a whole dance routine and do this crazy dance routine for the audience. It was really fun. Sounds like such a fun set and such it was, a fun people, camaraderie. People came, actors, uh, musicians, so many people came and just hung out on our set on Friday nights because it was a party. It was so cool. It was like TLC was there and Eddie Murphy was there and you're like LL Cool J and you're just like, everybody's just hanging out on the set because it was a fun place to be. Well, we just want to say thanks for the memories because you've been amazing. Yes, round of applause. Thank you. For Miss Karen Parsons. Thank you. And before we let you get back to the autograph area and photos and hopefully you guys can go meet her uh, in the next hall, any final words because you're doing so many amazing things, acting, producing, writing, philanthropy. Um, any final words for your fans and t uh, what's coming up for you? Well, I just say this, please, I mean, I really appreciate you being here and thank you so much again, I said earlier, it's truly been an honor to be in this position. This is not something we ever expected. I ever could have expected. But just looking out at you guys, listening to me right now, <laughs> I'm really grateful. And so thank you so much. And I do hope that you will check out the other stuff that I've got going on now because there has been for me life after the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. Um, and so if you check out uh, Karen Parsons, I think it's Karen underscore Parsons dot com, something like that, or Karen Parsons dot com, but also Sweet Blackberry, sweetblackberry dot org. You can see my organization and the stuff I've been up to. I've been writing novels as well, and so just other stuff. But come visit me over at the table and say hi. Yes. It's really nice to talk to you. It's been so lovely to talk to you, and great questions from all of you guys as yeah, well. Thank you. Give it up one more time for Karen Parsons. Thank you.